Okay, so uh, welcome to the W3C call for the 14th of July, uh, 2021. Uh, this is the first call of phase four for Open Active. Uh, so it's a bit of a housekeeping and administration call. Um, but before I start, I'm just gonna ask everybody else on the call to introduce themselves. Uh, I will start uh, as Timothy Hill, uh, Open Active program lead and convener for this meeting with the Open Data Institute, uh, Jason. Can you introduce yourself, please? I can indeed. Jason Sorrell from the Open Data Institute, uh, consultant on the Open Active program. Uh, Mike? Uh, Mike Thacker from Porism Limited, uh, wearing many hats. Uh, my company's technical partners with the Local Government Association in lots of things to do with data sharing in local government. I've also been working on the Open Referral UK data standard which is is used in social prescribing and hence has big overlaps with open active um, and i'm involved in other data sharing projects and i've done some work for the odi in the past um, uh, my interest really is in how uh, open active is going to be administered and supported in future uh, so i can learn some lessons and maybe so uh, where appropriate we can share approaches Thank you, Mike. Uh, Ollie, could you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, sure. Ollie, um, digital project manager at London Sport. And last but not least, and right on cue, um, Nick, could you introduce yourself, please? Hello, uh, Nick from IMIN. Fantastic. Okay, and I will just start uh, sharing the slides here. Um, um, and as I mentioned at the start, um, this is the first um, this is the first call of phase four. Um, phase four is going to see um, a change of approach, I suppose. So the general idea is that uh, Open Active becomes more focused on particular initiatives and supporting particular projects uh, more than being a sort of broad spectrum outreach to the community. Um, and that entails some change to how technical discussions take place. Um, so yeah, this is a bit of an administrative call. Um, so I'll run the sort of technical communication channels by people and ask for feedback. Um, this is the proposal that's currently on the table for how we move things forward. And I think we've got an interesting mix of people uh, on the call. Um, excuse any giggling in the background, please. Um, because we've got we've got Nick from IMIN who are very deeply um, invested in and engaged with the community. Um, we've got London Sport who I think are slightly more arm's length. I mean, using our standards quite a bit, but uh, not not as um, central or as committed to to, to Open Active. Uh, one of many strings to their bow. And then we've got uh, Porism uh, and Open Referral who are sort of running slightly parallel. Um, so I think we actually do have a good mix for this kind of conversation. Hopefully this is useful lessons for Mike um, rather than negative lessons, but we'll see how we go. Um, is everyone seeing the opening slide there? Okay, great. Um, so I think the challenge that we've had so far is that um, most conversation, most technical conversation has happened in one of two forums. Uh, one of them is this, are the W3C calls um, and the other of which is a, is a tech drop-in. Um, the W3C calls I think have had difficulty getting traction outside people who are very, very committed to particular issues, because they do tend to be very, very technical. Um, discussions tend to get quite in depth there. Um, and this has led to, I think, well, it's, it's certainly led to some complaints that uh, it's hard to track what's going on. If you're a stakeholder who's not actually a developer, it's very difficult to track the implications of W3C calls. And um, it's hard to engage with them if you're not already thoroughly committed to them. Um, and then the tech drop-in, of course, serves a very different kind of purpose. It's ended up being hashing out technical details sometimes with people who are already in the ecosystem. Often it's functioned in the past as a kind of introduction to Open Active. If you, if you don't know where you are, 
Um, if you're finding your technical moorings, the, the drop-ins are the place to go. Um, so Sport England and the Open Data Services uh, Cooperative uh, who have been commissioned by Sport England to take a look at how phase four could and should run have uh, proposed a slight rejigging of how this all fits together. Um, basically retaining uh, both of the both of the existing forums, adding another forum, uh, but slightly um, adjusting the role that each of them play in communications. Um, so the first change is that W3C calls um, would be focused more on things like requirements, uh, business models, architecture, very high level implications um, and requirements gathering for changes to the specification uh, tooling and that sort of thing. Uh, they would continue going on fortnightly, um, but as soon as conversations started getting into you know, code pretty much, then that would be a conversation for the implementers forum. Uh, the implementers forum would be there for um, people who are already on the implementation path and who are already engaged deeply with the specifications and are actually trying to you know, get things done. And that's where conversations about frameworks and coding and how a particular feature you know, can work and so on would be discussed there. Um, so this would be a, a more narrow cast kind of forum. And then finally, the tech drop-ins would, would continue more or less as is, but with the idea that it would really be reserved for new entrants to the ecosystem and as a sort of introductory step for people. You know, After people had been through to one tech drop-in, hopefully they could participate in the implementers forum uh, or the W3C calls you know, as they saw fit. So that would be the, that's kind of the big picture of how that would all fit together. Um, in terms of the actual management, um, facilitation for the W3C calls would continue with the ODI uh, with me um, as, the, as the facilitator. The implementers forum as the new thing is kind of up for grabs. Um, it could be the ODI. Uh, it could also be ODSC, um, not clear at the moment. Um, given limitations of ODI resourcing, ODSC might make more sense there. Um, and then finally, the tech drop-in could just continue more or less unchanged. Um, principles running these. Um, the W3C call uh, should run as it was always meant to run and has not for some months now. Um, videos would be recorded and put up online. Um, invitation would be open so anybody could join if they wanted to. Uh, there would be uh, maybe not minutes exactly, but a summary provided. Uh, and the agenda would always be public. So that would be you know, running as they're supposed to run. Um, the implementers forum would be uh, open invitational um, and a record would be kept of, of discussions really for future reference. If we get into technical weeds, it makes sense to, to make sure that we document that somewhere. Um, my feeling is that Recording this would probably not be terribly interesting as long as the actions coming out of it are fairly well documented um, or the technical detail is fairly well documented. I suspect watching a video of people talking about, you know, how they integrated with a particular, you know, PHP framework would be, would be less riveting for people. Um, and then finally, the tech drop-in is just an open invitation. It's not minute that it's, it's really just there as a chat. Um, in terms of scheduling, I think probably uh, W3C call and the implementers forum fortnightly, but alternating. So you'd have a W3C call one week, then the implementers forum would be the next week and so on. And you can imagine them sort of feeding into each other that the W3C call hopefully provides an agenda for the next implementers forum so that you can unpack details there. Um, and that is, is really about it for me. That's the proposal, um, but I would be interested in feedback on this from participants on the call because you've all got slightly different paths of engagement and different things that you want from open active um, so i'd be interested to hear um, whether this is perfectly adequate or whether there would be um, alterations you'd like to make uh, and which which of these you would probably find most useful to engage with um, i'll just oh sorry jason 
of the video, is it worth um, announcing how often the tech drop-in will be run? Oh, sorry. Yeah, so the tech drop-in, yeah, that that right now is fortnightly as well. Um, and I think we would just keep that keep that rolling. Um, maybe advertise it a bit better, actually. Um, it's been, it's kind of turned into a hangout for uh, <laughs> established developers to hang out and chat about weird things that have been happening and observed. But um, I think I think probably we need to uh, yeah, repurpose it a bit or just get it out there more. Um, so By that, I think uh, maybe you you meaning Tim that when uh, uh, Nathan and I join and we just chat about the latest problems of the PHP bugs that that actually probably now deserves to live in the implementers forum. I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I do worry that like I, I really like those conversations. Um, I do worry that if somebody who was a newbie actually showed up, they'd be like run screaming if they were exposed to any of that. Um, yeah, yeah, I did actually think the we, the the other day, um, for everyone else's uh, benefit, um, we had a, a situation where we had one of those really in depth PHP conversations, or, or however it was even about PHP or something, and then a new person turned up, and we kind of paused the conversation for for forty minutes or so while we introduced everything to the new person, and then they left and we carried on. Uh, it did feel a bit like, uh, yeah, two calls would have made more sense, so we all knew what we were doing, and that would have. Also, I think we planned to have a detailed technical discussion in that call, which didn't really make much sense, given that new people can, of course, turn up and disrupt yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that would be an implementers forum kind of kind of thing. Um, I guess the question for that kind of conversation is, how urgent was that conversation? I mean, if if you'd had to wait wait thirteen days for that conversation to happen, would that have been too long? what we were talking about now oh yes it was because um it was because playfinder were implementing some of the uh uh some of the the updates to cr3 spec um and they had questions about some of the github issues yeah so we were getting into the detail of that mm -hmm. uh, which would have been great to minute actually i think we actually did it in the end right up into the github issue the content of the conversation so maybe that's all that minuting means in that context but um yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, probably there's like a rolling notes thing. And ideally that rolling notes consists of a link to a GitHub issue. That, right. you know, yeah, um, maybe a little bit of context, but. Could we have waited 13 days? Um, I mean, potentially, I don't know, is it, what, what makes an influencers forum? If two people get together and want to talk about something earlier than that for some reason, or I say two, more than two, you know, mm. any, any, any number greater than one uh is that then an implementers can they be ad hoc and those conversations happen as long as they go in the minute stock or, or is that what's that's yeah, probably it's probably uh fortnightly plus ad hoc isn't it i guess that's the that's the way to do it um yeah 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 that could, i mean that i don't know there's it's weird with implementation it seems like they are kind of urgent in that there's usually someone's time scales yeah and some some business need for the implementation to be happening uh, otherwise, the implementations don't generally happen. So there's uh, there's all the all the interest in getting a problem solved, and then of course, as soon as the business reasons subsides, then that dissipates yeah. quickly. Uh, okay. Uh, well, let's let's do it that way then. Um, ooh, I'm trying to think administratively. It's a bit it's a bit tricky because you don't want to you don't want to slow down the cadence of that. Well, I, I mean, I mean, practically, from what we've seen of the calls, when basically Nathan uh, has has joined the uh, and well, it's been Nathan, myself, and, and you, and whoever else has turned up on the drop-in, that usually we've been waiting for the next call to have the conversation. It's not been hugely urgent, so I imagine ad hoc would be more the exception. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think. So, there, I mean, there are always Zoom calls. Um, Yeah, I suppose. I suppose the implication is that you sort of have to ping the ODI to say, "Hi, we're having one of these, um, and and you should attend." Um, oh, I see. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Is um, that facilitated? So it needs more than two people. It needs two people plus facilitation. Yeah, yeah. Um, make a make a call. And I, and I think it's I think it's useful for the ODI to have sight of those issues. I mean just just to be aware that they're there i mean hopefully things in the implementers forum 
if they're significant enough that they start causing changes to the spec and might interfere with other people's implementations, then that moves into the W3C call. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully the implementation form is, is really, we have the specific problem. We know the destination, it's clearly defined, but getting there is the hard bit. Um, but I think it's still useful for open active as a whole to have sight of those kinds of issues. Um, yeah, I almost wonder whether, or maybe this is just a stop. So we could have an implementers forum open Slack channel on the uh, on the. Hmm, that's a nice thought. Yeah, I want one of these. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe, and then maybe that Slack channel could also be used for questions and random conversation that happens in between. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe if we kind of have rules around threads so that people don't get spammed horrendously, like mm -hmm. try and put your most of the conversation in the thread. Uh, so that a particular issue is easy to, to find later. And then, as you say, it's, if anything in the influencers forum moves into the territory of, of any spec proposal or change, then that, I guess, gets promoted or something. Uh, GitHub issues raised. Yeah, yeah, which in fact we've, we've seen, right? This, you get this sort of like, ooh, is it a string or is it a, is it a number? And yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Soon yeah, that thing yeah. that looks like a tiny detail of library implementation is destroying everything. Oh, um. uh, yeah, that's a really good example. That's a really good example. Yes, the three hour conversation about whether pricing should be an integer or a string, which did get documented in the GitHub issue, of course. Um, but also, uh, yeah, it may have been interesting for other people to join in that thread if they'd have seen it on, on, uh, on that somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Um... And I guess, I guess for your part, Nick, I guess the W3C call being higher level, I suppose that would that would continue to be useful for you or possibly even more useful for you to, to attend. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess, um, yeah, high level. And, but I assume, where does the conversations about what a particular property gets called or, I mean, not that we make new properties very often, but and maybe that's actually very minor compared to the conversation about what the property actually is. Um, I'm thinking about, do you remember that we had that facility type call a few months yeah, ago? Yeah. So that, is that as an example, is that, are we pitching a higher level than that or is that around the right level or? Um, I think that's around the right level. I suppose, I suppose the question is, as currently understood, does the issue involve everybody who's trying to implement or does it involve just some named party. I guess that's the difference between an implementer and a, and a, the specification. Um, right. And yeah, so I think facility type that's that's broad reaching. I mean, really anybody who's in the open active ecosystem would conceivably hit, be hit by that. So yeah, W three C. That's why. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And that was a W three C call we had. Um, yeah. So so it's so although high level is part of it, it's also about reach. As in, like, a, a, as in, like, if we were to decide to change pricing to be an integer, sorry, it is an integer. Uh, sorry, it's a uh, <laughs> well, it was um, a hellacious conversation, as I recall. Yeah. yeah. Um, if it was to be proposed to become a string, presumably that, even though it's a very, very detailed piece of information, would need to go through the W3C. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah so I guess it's really about, yeah, scope of, of the change. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that, makes, that makes a lot of sense. Um, focuses the calls. Yeah, I suppose I suppose the clue is in the name really. W3C expanded out to, you know, the, the community bit is it's the community and the implementers is really are you implementing right now or in the foreseeable future? And you know this is this is the venue for you then. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so so Mike uh, do any of these channels answer to the kinds of things that that tourism and open referral would be interested in? Um, I guess I'm more I'm more interested in it as a con in in contrast with what Open Referral UK is, is doing at the moment, and, and and I don't know if they're the same issues because can I can I just just raise a few sort of dumb points at first, and I'm very conscious that I'm speaking to a group that meets regularly, and I I'm not part of that regularly, but that's possibly not a bad use case in terms of wanting to get others involved. Um, and I like the idea of, of, of a drop-in because I do think, you know, you'll get newbies who want to ask the dumb questions and not be embarrassed by them. Um, and possibly a Slack channel is, is useful for them given that we're not documenting. 
we've gone and and it's yet to be proven but it's so far okay with the the old-fashioned approach of a forum an online web forum not a you have to wait two weeks and meet um, and part of that is because there's kind of a crossover between non-technical adopters you know this is what i want to achieve is it suitable and how can i achieve it and you know i'd like to do this with the standard but it doesn't quite let me or a techie would step in and say yes it does let you um so we but partly because of that and partly because once we start getting the same questions asked over and over again we can just point somebody to an answer rather than say well you've got to go you know join a drop in and next week we'll answer the same questions as we answered two months ago and we'll next two months that said people still want to talk on a one-to-one -one. so i i i'm interested that your approach is very largely meetings based um and there's not a lot outside of that but can i just ask in terms of the non-technical communication channels is there a forum for non-technical adopters for people who are making a decision as to whether or not implementing open active is suitable for their their own use case i think that's the right question i think that's the broken link indeed um we have because we've got engagement forums which are more general and more yeah aimed at decision makers stakeholders put it that way um but they have a very hard time keeping track of what the technical implications of what they sign up for in the engagement calls might be and they all, and also there's a hard time communicating back what the business implications of decisions made in the w3c calls might be so that's kind of the hard bit and does um, engagement mean that it's a two-way thing it's not just people being spoken to is it it's people coming with their their use cases and, and querying the suitability well, Jason can speak to that, but my, my impression is yes. <laughs> okay, good. good. Uh, yes, Mike, 100%. It goes two ways. Uh, we do do a lot of outreach, but we're here to receive any incoming as well and, and provide the support that's required to um, yeah, hopefully onboard them in the long run. But yeah, the, for, the, 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 the web forum idea is, is an interesting one because yeah, most of our conversation we've tried to channel toward GitHub. Mm -hmm. um, which certainly has all the functionality you would want, but yeah, it's it's um, it's off-putting to anybody who's not sort of already familiar with GitHub. Um, so it's it's a nice idea. Out of curiosity, what software are you using for that? Uh, I can look it up. It's a it's pretty bog standard. It's the same as is used by the Open Knowledge Foundation for their forum. Um, so uh, I can tell you if <laughs> if you i think it's discourse okay mm -hmm. discord this discourse this i think it's discord isn't it the gaming industry use that quite a lot i think it's discord if i'm correct uh, kind of has okay a i think it's discourse maybe there are two of them but ours is discourse oh, um I feel like Discord is terrible branding for a forum. Uh, <laughs> start a big fight, um, or, or great. But anyway, um, okay. I think that's I think that's worth bearing consideration about. Yeah, and I think we were also kind of thinking of using Slack a bit like that, um, or rather porting Slack conversations into GitHub. But again, Slack is a very if if somebody if somebody has an do people email with queries, and in which case. Where do they go and what happens with, with the answers? Because I, I guess I try and say to people, look, put your query in the forum, or if you don't, I'll put it there and I'll answer it for everybody else. But is there a lot of one-to-one -one and does that fall on your shoulders, Tim? Or is there a, a team of less senior people that do the routine supporting? Uh, no, there's well, there's supposed to be a team of one who will be doing uh, right. <laughs> shortly. Um, yeah, but yeah, we have we have tended to do it as a series of sort of one to ones that people initially reach out via email and then we arrange a call with them and then we have a have a chat. Um, and the numbers are the, it may well be that the numbers are sufficiently small that that makes sense. So don't let me impose anything else. Yeah, right now. Right now, I think it 
broadly works. Um, I think the um, I think the the difficulty is we tend to get the tough cases. Um, so people who have read all of the documentation on the website and have understood it and are happy to digest it, um, you know, they'll they'll get in touch just to say, you know, oh, we're doing something. Um, I think that the difficulty is more when people have read all of that material and they still don't quite understand it. That's when that's when the engagement becomes quite heavy. Um, and it might be that a forum is actually more useful that way because a lot of the time it's simply, there's just a conceptual mismatch that they, they're coming from a booking system or something similar that works in a particular way. And it just doesn't philosophically align with how open active works. And trying to cross that bridge is very difficult if you're not in their shoes. Um, so I could imagine a forum, with answers composed by people co coming from other parts of the sector might be might be useful that way because I don't think we've ever really cracked that that nut. Um, okay, that's that's a that's a useful suggestion. I will take that on board and probably throw that into the into the pot. Um, it's it's or, one of these things that you you can't sort of do half heartedly because it doesn't look good if you create one and it's very poorly populated. <laughs> That's probably what Nick was about to say. So um, yeah, you, you need need to take some caution. But when we started ours, I got loads of sort of influential people to influence to introduce themselves in the first week. Mm -hmm. And what kind of what kind of traffic do you get? Is it fairly steady? Not massive. It's sort of five or ten a week at the moment. Um, and it's probably dropping, and maybe that's because they've already had the questions answered, or maybe it's it's um, it's that certain projects have come to an end. And and I guess moderation. Then I mean, you're getting people who are mostly on target and are more or less self-regulating in terms of yeah. how interactions happen. Yeah. yeah, there's no, there's there's never been any abuse so far. <laughs> it's, it's... Um, okay. Just Mark, you're 100% right. It's definitely discourse, so I will wind my neck in there. But um, I've gone and had a look at it, and it does integrate with Slack. So it might mean, from a from an ease point of ease perspective, it doesn't mean we've got loads of channels. It must integrate into the, the main one that we use. OK. I feel like, Jason, you're you're building an action for yourself. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, before we get too far with discourse, GitHub also has discussions functionality built in. So if we wanted to keep platforms um, less than rather than more, although discourse I've, I've seen in use in, um, I'm part of a forum actually that, that uses uh, uses discourse. Um, but uh, I don't know, I also know that schema.org have started to move to discussions for the GitHub discussion stuff. Um, so it might just be worth uh, looking at both of those options and, and seeing whether. Uh... I, think it, I think it's probably actually a question of testing a little bit about who we're actually, who our audience is because yeah, developers GitHub, no problem. Um, if discussions is not perceived as causing a big hurdle, we can use that. I've just been surprised by how much GitHub is off-putting to people who, who haven't used it before. Because it, it feels like it's either second nature or it's just frightening and, and aversive. Um, but Yeah, it sounds like it depends on who it is. But that was yeah. the other thing I was, I was going to mention. Um, it's so part of the potential I'm not sure if this is a difference between open referral and this or, or whether that's actually just dealt with differently, but people that um, get involved in open active often tend to be kind of, if they're startups, they're pursuing kind of a business model. They've got an idea. There's something around it, which is a little bit unique. Um, and they're, they're, they're not cagey, maybe too extreme, but they're not, they're not so keen to shout about it to everybody. Um, and sometimes the questions that are asked are like, you know, given that we're trying to do this, how does that work? So um, that was just, it's just a comment on, I, I'd be interested to see the uptake if we did decide to go ahead and do that. Um, and I suppose the other thing, we have a number of channels at the moment we try to keep on top of. I'm not sure we're necessarily all over those as much as we could be. Um, we're not necessarily, for example, the W3C mailing list, um, uh, you know, various, various things that we have, if we had time, we would do. Um, and um, I, yes. Um, right, yeah, adding, adding another one doesn't help. Um, yeah, Tim knows what I'm talking about when I say that we've got, there's an admin backlog the size of uh, a quite a large one at the moment, just dealing with the channels we've got. And uh, I don't know if 
if we haven't got time to do that, for example, if, if, if there's if there's time, if it's difficult to find time to, um, you know, write minutes up or do things like that from the current existing channels that we have, um, then yeah, I'd be, I, I but maybe is it is it something about like mastering the things that we're currently talking about here? If that's the, the proposal, making sure that you know the the W three C, um, you know backlog of stuff that needs to be done to catch up on that is all up to spe speed and uh, that, that everything is in line and in order. And then at that point, um, and, and that people who are asking questions on GitHub are getting quick responses because at the moment, there's, you know, so some of them are waiting kind of a week or two weeks um, for those things to happen. So if we can't respond to GitHub issues within two weeks and we can't update minutes within longer at the moment um, because we're all busy, um, then does it make sense to try and add another channel to that stuff? Um, and, and I guess where's the time coming from if 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 it's available that would would help do that? <laughs> and if so, can we redirect that time towards doing the other stuff first and then coming back and doing this afterwards? Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess the problem is, yeah, I think the problem is sort of one of demand in a way um, that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really about non-technical engagement is the tr is the tricky bit or the kind of fence straddling technical. So, you know, people who are running a small startup that need to have sight of technical issues, um, but aren't themselves developers or aren't actively involved in hand on develop hands on development, um, you know, team managers, that kind of thing. Um, I think the difficulty is so things like the W3C calls. Um, who really wants to see it um, is people who are already fairly far into the weeds and other people who are not fairly far into it are like, well, I can't engage with the W3C calls. Um, it's, it's not a question of where are the videos? Why can't I watch the videos? Where are the minutes? It's a question of um, give me something that, you know, I'm willing to watch, which is in some ways an unfair demand. Um, you know, <laughs> you're communicating in ways I don't prefer. Why, why don't I understand it is, is, you know, a uh, difficult demand to square. Um, but I worry that, yeah, every, everything is, is, is indeed a time suck and, and behind schedule. Um, getting caught up with those things is not going to make that demand go away, unfortunately. Whether a forum is the answer to that question, I suppose is um, another, another issue, but. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a good, it's a good challenge. I guess, yeah, well, it's a resource problem then, uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Or something. Um, yes, if 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 in times of, of of lack of resource, adding more things, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and it, but, I, but the thing is, I think I think it is kind of core about, you know, we're supposed to be open, and one sense of that is, yeah, having all the all of the discussions, you know, available and out there and viewable. Um, but it does have to be digestible to people in order to, you know, to really be open to, to get eyes on it. It needs to be in a format that people will in fact review. Um, yeah. I mean, without, yeah. I, I, and so Tim, this is not at all like, cause I know that everyone's busy and I'm, I'm the same and we've all got stuff uh, we're doing. And so I'm really trying to like, to, like, you know, it's I'm just yeah, thinking yeah, yeah. realistically about this. Um, uh, but uh, for example, um, when when the the great summaries that goes out with this this call go out, uh, you know, with only a few bullet points that summarize the exact business implications of what is being discussed in a way that's trackable, um, and then you know a video that goes along with it. Maybe if those those points reference point in that video, you know, in terms of times, where it's like at forty eight minutes we discussed X of business implication Y. Well, if someone really wants to go in and dip into that, they can do that and. Previously, I mean, years ago now, uh, we had uh, people who would watch the videos and catch up and then would say, oh, I, I watched this and that and caught up and I'd be interested to join the next one because I saw blah, blah, blah. Just makes it easier for people to, um, I mean, as a really basic example, I'm on holiday in a couple of weeks, which I very rarely do, and I'll be missing a W3C call. And um, uh, as it stands, there's no way for me to really get a handle on what happened there. And obviously, I'm very entrenched in the, in the, in the weeds of all the things. Um, and so... I wonder whether you know if it, summaries like that of the work we're already doing, um, which which on the one hand are seem are not much work, but also are work 
that needs to be scheduled and, and someone needs to do it and prioritize and all the rest of it. So uh, it's, um, yeah, yeah I, I kind of wonder whether we, whether the channels that are as advertised could be used and, and even the tech drop-in at the beginning of the tech drop-ins life, it was less technical and it was a drop-in for both technical and non-technical and whatever people, whatever questions people had, um, they could turn up and ask. And sometimes that was a high level question. Sometimes that was a detailed question. And that was a, a great place that they could engage um, because often they didn't really know the right question to ask. They just wanted to know how to mm -hmm. do something. Um, so, um, so yeah, this is, this isn't me. It's all saying we should definitely not have a discussion forum. It was more just kind of flagging that. Yeah. 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 Um, holistically as uh, some, maybe some considerations there, I don't know. Okay, I'll just, I'll just note the resource implications um, that, yeah, obviously we need to keep on top of it. Um, yeah. Um, and, and I wasn't necessarily pushing it. I was just saying this is a contrast in the approaches and I guess it's, it's down ultimately to what the audience is or what you want the audience to become. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's, I think that's a difficult thing is just we've got, you know, everything was designed around engagement for people who were not technical and technical stuff for people who were, and then there's this middle swathe um, and what the right answer is, whether, yeah, as Nick says, at 4830, um, OAuth for uh, membership, uh, it, you know, belongs here, um, you know, take a look at this, whether that's the best approach or whether, you know, some other venue is, is a good approach or, or what, I guess, is the question. Um, and yeah, my... Uh, yeah, I guess I guess the approach outlined there does make sense as long as the W3C call does indeed retain that higher level, this will affect your business, this will affect the spec kind of focus. Um, I think it doesn't make sense if it is, yeah, um, uh, you know, degrees of precision in prices and how we do rounding. I suspect probably tracking that minutely is going to be less, less interesting. Um, but yeah, if the W3C call does manage to keep that scope, Mm -hmm. then a more narrow kind of approach becomes more more feasible and relevant and more interesting to to everyone to watch really that's a really good point actually maybe maybe that's something in phase four we could try and hold ourselves to account on and in every w3c call we start each point that we're going into with a business level thing yeah yeah okay good yeah yeah come out the other side with a conclusion that's at business level and then everyone knows what, what, what's going on yeah yeah, that's a good way to yeah focus focus the agenda, um, and then it makes yeah minuting and so on and so forth less onerous than it otherwise would be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's um, that's useful. Um, with yeah some hmm. yeah that make yeah that, I guess that's the thing to try first, and if that fails, we look at other options. Um, and and yeah, if we find that we. If we find that there's still problems with the implementers forum or the tech drop in, you know, we keep on running into the same kind of issues um, and one-on-one -on -one is just not a good way of, of dealing with that. Um, then the forum becomes more uh, applicable to that domain. Um, Ollie, um, would these channels answer to London sports needs? Um, yeah, I mean, one question I was gonna ask was, so in terms of, for example, specifically open sessions, questions we've had before where I've um, raised them, which are specific issue that's happening in open sessions, but could be an issue that is happening in other systems. Um, so two things. One, I'm assuming needs to be raised in the implementers forum, if I've got that correct. And the second question was, I know you've mentioned it, obviously the time is sort of, you're busy um, and we've now got an additional call. So if, if this is the case, that's fine. But is part of this to take away from actually kind of going direct to you? Because I know I've sometimes gone direct to you rather than mm. through any channels. So is that still okay? Or is the point of this to start documenting all issues across the ecosystem and therefore we shouldn't go direct to you in any case? Well, I mean, it's not, it's not, like, a, it's not like a wall. Um... Yeah, I mean, I think I think ideally, yeah, right. if you if you did encounter an issue, it'd be like, oh, you know, show up at the implementers forum and, and we we talk about it there because it would be better documented. Um, and yeah, because other people will presumably hit similar issues. Um, but yeah, it's this certainly is like we're shutting not, not saying, you know, we're shutting down the email addresses. Don't talk to us you know, if you're not in yeah. the forum. Um, and I think, you know, our, our history has been that it's usually it's usually been issues that aren't, you know, urgent. Nothing's on fire. It's it's just more a question of approach and and what you should be looking at in the next sprint. 
Um, so I think, you know, a fortnightly implementers call probably suits that fairly well. Um, yeah, from my perspective, um, sorry, along with this and the engagement call, so that'll be four calls every two weeks that there's a chance to attend based on your need. Um, so that sounds sufficient enough to be able to get across any issues there maybe. Yeah, I guess if it's not, we have to really reconsider. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I uh, guess, oh, sorry, Nick. Well, I was just thinking what Molly said on the, um, the influencers forum. Uh, yeah, you, I guess if there's a influencers forum Slack channel, and then if, I guess, depending on how that gets used, maybe that's where GitHub issues or, or discussion forum or something could, just thinking about documenting those questions and answers in that forum. If there's, mm -hmm. I mean, Ollie raised a great one on GitHub, and if anyone saw it um, yesterday about um, the, the uh, validator having a, a, a problem, this is a very specific issue, but obviously that makes sense to put that on GitHub. Mm -hmm. That would probably still be the place to put it. Um, I was just thinking if those, if those, um, it sounds like what are currently direct emails were to become kind of a Slack in the influencers forum Slack channel, but maybe it's still just Tim and Ollie talking, other people can chip in. And also then that could become a discussion point in the influencers mm -hmm. forum um, that might have a nice, and then if there seems to be a gap where some stuff in that in the Slack channel come, comes up more than once, as you say, Tim, maybe then, you know, creating a discussion forum or whatever it is that, that sits in between that can capture that stuff makes sense. But I guess yep. maybe that'd be a, it could be a nice way of, of starting out that just to see where the, you probably get quite a good sense from that Slack channel where the traffic is and what the kind mm -hmm. of questions are and, and where they're coming from and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that ties in nicely because yeah, I think, I think, because that that GitHub issue, if it's the one I'm thinking of, actually did arise from a from a call and uh, an email exchange. So I think that I think that's sort of broadly the right flow. It's just maybe a little bit bumpier because it, it involves a you know an initial you know one to one and then it moves into a wider forum. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe just smoothing that process a little bit would benefit everybody um, and and make it more open again. Mm -hmm. um, I think linked to what everyone's saying, I think where Mike started in regards to you know you could have four weeks of calls of the same questions being asked. It's just having a nice place to put it all together, kind of like an FAQs area um, for the implementers forum, mm -hmm. I guess, would be, would be smooth and easy going. And that could easy, easily start as just GitHub issues in the documentation uh, repo. You know, these are things that would be great to add to the documentation at some point. Um, if, if because maybe, I, I mean, that's, I suspect given our, the state of our documentation, some of those questions are probably almost at that They're level. in there somewhere, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, you know, this really should be in like the second page of the documentation, but it just hasn't been written anywhere. Like I, like I, I, I fixed something yesterday in the IDs because the reason we use at ID just isn't written anywhere. And someone was struggling with that. And so it's just kind of like, well, that, why isn't that written everywhere? That should probably be. Um, so maybe, uh, that, yeah, yeah, maybe there's a, if there's a flow where that kind of stuff, that kind of content ends up somewhere formal as well, when there's time yeah, yeah. for someone to move that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay, um, I guess given that we've got, well, we've got 12 minutes, that's not too bad. Um, I guess my final question, given all that very useful feedback, are these the right names for things? Um, I feel like W3C call could use some unpacking a little bit. Um, I feel like people who know what the W3C is are you know, quite happy with, with that notion. And we obviously want to retain that reference to W3C and whatever we call it, but it feels to me a little opaque if you're not already engaged. Um, if anyone has a, a label for what those kinds of higher level architectural businessy kind of kind of questions, you know, significant questions um, would be, uh, I'd be grateful. What do, what do you call them an open referral or is there, a, is there anything analogous? Uh, I, I don't think there is. I mean, we're looking at, I guess, what we'd call a doctor's or a forum, which is the non-technical, and, and, and then and what we would call a technical forum. Mm -hmm. To me, W3C sounds, you know, highly technical, and, and you know, it's 
it's the extent to which changes to open active impact on international standards and, and the required to requirement to change those but um i guess we we have an interface with open referral in the u.s but that's the only thing there isn't there isn't a higher standards body right okay yeah. whereas you know you have the discipline of that which is good um quite how you explain that to the non-techies or maybe you just never need to but it's um it's so if I'm am I right in saying then this is um how open active impacts on international standards? Well um I think the, I think the distinction is discussion of well discussion of things at standards level, really. So the implementers forum ideally is just people implementing the standards and the, the difficulties in their roadmap there. Um so it's it's not necessarily about how it has an impact on international standards, although the fact that we're sort of based off schema.org does mean that often you do get that kind of like membrane that you're that you're pushing up against. Um, it's it's more about communicating that this is um, this is something that hits sort of the standards as a whole and hits business logic as a whole. That you know, if something changes in the W3C call, your system is going to have to change. And equally well impacts on other people using the same same yeah, part yeah, of schema yeah. org outside of Open Active. Yeah, but potentially, yeah, yeah. Where we do submit um, proposals to to schema based on conversations in the W three C group. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll leave that one aside. Maybe uh, maybe uh, that can be a <laughs> adjacent an engagement problem. I think it does need a better name. I just haven't got one. <laughs> Something probably involving the word standard or standardization, maybe. Yep. Um, open active standardization, something. Yeah. Um, so so that, I guess what open act, open referral, open referral certainly does is it gathers feedback mainly in GitHub issues from what you could consider implementation. Mm -hmm forums or, or mailing lists and whatever and flags these things and then periodically has a review of the standard as a whole which open data services actually does mm -hmm. so it's not a it's not a routine every two weeks thing it's uh, when there are enough points that are worthy of being fed back then do an, an overview of the whole package hmm, that's interesting that implies a very different cadence because i think i think the every two weeks i mean there have been the odd points where you know everybody's heads down in in implementation um or something and so it hasn't really been necessary but i think there's really it's really been under active development more or less the entire time i think you know the issues discussed have been substantive every fortnight for you know years now um which is maybe something that needs looking at as well do, do people implement their own extensions and variations and then take them back to w3c afterwards yeah. so to some extent they're not they're not time limited by that if 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 you know in theory they they could have to reverse those if if the open w3c discussion reveals something general or a different way of doing the same thing but you can get on and do something and then package these things up later on for consideration with w3c yeah i mean people will implement beta properties and there's a mechanism for doing that and then you know those eventually get surfaced into into the spec um you know that said we have broken things um so yeah um the the process is sometimes slower than the the evolution which i guess is something every standards you know body negotiates um yeah, it's, it's interesting because um, I, I'm trying to think part of the, re the rationale for where this came from. I think, I, well, I, I mean, it's also something that I, I know that other, other um, standards do. Um, I think the JSON LD standard, you can actually go online and find all the calls that they had and throughout the, the evolution of that. Um, some of which are fascinating to listen to just because obviously they got well into the weeds of things, but um, the, that catalog is somewhat substantial, similar to ours um but uh i think i think part of the value potentially of having them more regularly is around making sure that there's a good amount of domain representation available for those 
in a way that's more difficult to get in in like mat on mass if you had to like do a big review and get mm. attention on a particular issue whereas getting a little bit of time from a lot of different people more frequently uh is is easier to digest for people i'll just come along to this one call and then move that along um yeah so it'd be interesting to see like how the odsc process works with that review and what i guess how they take on board that that domain expertise and um figuring all that stuff out i guess that must be quite an involved process when that happens yeah they're kind of paid for for an exercise which involves issuing documentation and you know, having calls to review proposals and then revising. So it goes through a couple, two or three rounds before you get to a, a version upgrade. Okay, right. Yeah, so you do a sort of intensive intensive review process and engage very in a very targeted way, I guess. And so I, I, I mean, I don't know if it's, it's the same is true for Urban Active, but sometimes you can have multiple requests for changes, which are actually trying to achieve the same thing, but by different means. And hence you have to sort of arbitrate and bring those together mm -hmm. yeah that's it so that, i think that, that that kind of happens on the calls at the moment um if there's a topic area uh or a beta property or something um then that yeah but do you have, do you just happen have to happen across the right call in order <laughs> to, to spot that somebody else is proposing what you want to do in a different way well yeah this is interesting i think so facility type is a good test case there because there's a whole facility type not to get into the detail but facility type is a whole nest of slightly different but related concerns and how you unpick those i guess this has been the problem i guess what happened was we there was a tentative conversation it turned difficult it got dropped for a long time then it got picked up again then it got dropped when it turned complicated. And so there's been like a very slow convergence. So I suppose what that hasn't been good for, it's been very good for surfacing all the details. And I think for getting a good sense of what the use case actually is over that time. But what it's been bad at is, is hitting deadlines that if you, because I think that that issue has been, you know, running for about two and a half years now or something, and it's approaching a good solution. Um, and I think we've talked to everybody who's got an interest in it really at the moment. Um, so it's been very thorough, but yeah, the the wheels have ground slowly and mighty fine on that one. Um, Although it's interesting that as that has evolved over the years, because yeah, I agree, it has gone on absolutely. But the the actual understanding of the issues also evolved, and mm. the need for it. I mean, it's 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 been there enough that the people that need it can use it, um, and it hasn't been formalized more than it needed to be formalized. Almost. Um, I mean, we could have kind of done a knee jerk kind of straight away two, two years ago and just put something in but as it turns out and I guess part of that last call kind of shows that that would have been completely the wrong thing and almost the list that's been that was constructed that was starting to be used was also the quite kind of the wrong thing and it became clear through implementation that that happened so yeah it's, it's interesting like how so I feel like some of the some of the stuff that because there's so many different people doing things at different speeds and needing things uh hitting different deadlines the, yeah, know, it's just, it's just a different approach, but I can I can imagine facility type. Yeah, certainly being faster. That that it, it's it is a domain of related concerns, and it's been mostly the same parties involved in the conversation. Um, and I I can imagine that actually a sort of systematic review process, really trying to push it, would have worked as well in that particular case. Um, but they, then equally, as you say, people have been able to, to go ahead and, and implement, you know, the bits that they need as, as we've evolved. Um, I'm going to need to leave for oh, a 3 p.m. Yeah. meeting, but thank you for listening to me. Um, <laughs> feel, feel free to take it with a pinch of salt if that helps. And, and, and it's been really useful to understand how you're planning to work in phase four. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, very uh, useful contributions. Thank you, Mike. Bye for now. Um, okay, I feel like implementers forum and tech drop in. Those are the best labels I've got for those. Um, if anyone has other suggestions, um, that'd be great. Uh, maybe, maybe uh, if we if the word tech was replaced by uh, something about newness that doesn't necessarily imply technical, that could help. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Noob drop in. Um, <laughs>
I guess the issue there being that it then confuses itself with engagement because I quite yeah, like yeah. from tech and engagement. I, you know, we have many engagement dropping opportunities. At this point, I think it's when tech takes over. So I think it, the right. separation is good. Oh, okay. If we, if we okay. called it tech intro or something, that might be a tech intro drop in. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah. Distinction easy to make. Um, Okay, W3C call needs retitling. Um, but other than that, okay, I think I think that was actually uh, quite useful. I think that clarified at least what Open Active needs to do and some of the ways that it, it can actually do it. And, and actually a lot of it is just about housekeeping things better and being clear about how, when we're transitioning from one channel to the other is gonna be the main challenge, I think. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, um, so, I'll, I'll leave that there. And so very quickly, given that we're a minute over, um, is there any other business that anyone wanted to raise? Um, no, only uh, uh, just on the last point, if uh, if a, such a Slack channel of influencers one was to be created, then I'm happy to, to prompt uh, and Nathan, I'm sure would agree to move some of our more detailed conversations that have been happening recently over there to help seed that channel. That's okay, fine. cool. Great. Yeah. Um, um, I guess we also need to think about the invite list for, yeah, review who gets invited to these things. I think we need to reach out and say, hello, there's this resource, um, join us. But that is a separate conversation. Um, Do we want, yeah, I guess the whole of the Slack, 400 people is maybe too many people. It's just, <laughs> just put it on everyone's list. Yeah. Is that more than? Okay. Well, I mean, I think I think we certainly want to we want to make everybody aware of it. But there are going to you know people who have been complaining that they feel unengaged with or that they they're left out of the process or whatever. I think we do need to reach out to and say hello. Here is where you should be making your voice heard. Um, but that's a separate issue. Um, I think we could probably do with uh, with the newsletter going out about new structures moving forwards anyway for phase yeah. four. So it could be included within that. Okay. Cool. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for joining. Thank you for sticking around over the hour. Um, and uh, see you in two weeks when we start talking memberships.